Hi, welcome back to Why the Book Wins. My name is Laura, and today we are here to talk about the book Verity by Colleen Hoover. And as you can see by the title or the thumbnail, I did not like this book. <laughs> and I decided to make a whole video explaining why. Because so many people like this book. It has a 4.4 on Goodreads, which I do not understand. Like, I read the positive review, so I understand why some people like it. I don't know. I didn't read too many, <laughs> but I read some. And then I also watched some YouTube videos because I've been hearing about this book for a lot the last few months. I've been hearing about Colleen Hoover a lot for the last few months. And so the other day I was like, you know what? I got some time on my hands. How about I read a book outside of my book versus movie reading and read something, you know, that doesn't have a movie. So I decided to read a Colleen Hoover book and Verity sounded like one I would like because I had thought it was like a haunted house romance, which it wasn't, <laughs> but that's what I thought it was going into it. However, the fact that it wasn't what I thought it would be isn't why I didn't like it because it was still a thriller. It was like psychological thriller, I guess, but, and it had like the romance mixed in. But yeah, so that's why I decided to read this book. And now I did read it all in one day. <laughs> so that's something, I guess. And then there is one other YouTuber I watched, Kat from Paperback Reads. She talked about this book in one of her wrap ups from like a year ago. And she also did not like it. So it was so nice to hear her talk about it, to hear someone who did not like it. And she talked about how like she couldn't put it down. And she was like, even though I didn't like what I was reading, it was addicting. <laughs> Part of me, I gave it two stars on Goodreads. I don't know if it even deserves two, but I was like, I finished it and I read it in one day. So that must be saying something, right? So I gave it two stars. But anyway, real fast, I'm going to have a spoiler free section and then we'll get into spoilers. But honestly, even if you haven't read this book, <laughs> it's not worth reading. I literally would not recommend this book to anybody. So even if you haven't read it, go ahead and hear the spoilers because it's not worth reading anyhow. Having said that, a lot of people like it, so I don't know, who am I to say? Anyway, if you don't know what this is, book is about, we have Loen, who is a writer, and she is hired by the husband of Verity Crawford, because Verity Crawford has this successful series she is writing, except she got in a car accident is, and is now a vegetable, and so they need to hire a new writer to finish out the series. And Loen's writing style is similar to Verity's, and so that was one of the reasons they reached out to her. Anyway, she accepts the job. She moves into Verity's house where her husband and son are living. And then Verity herself is like in one of the rooms and you know, she's just comatose. So she's there, but she's not like mentally there. And so Loen is going through Verity's notes in her office and it's just a mess. And there's so many notes and papers everywhere. And she's reading Verity's book so that she can figure out what she's getting into and how to finish out the series. So that's the basic premise of this. And when I went into the book, I thought that the house they were going into was going to be haunted or something, but it wasn't. It just has that thriller vibe because Loen finds Verity's secret autobiography and it's like in a manuscript form. And so she's reading that and learning about Verity and Jeremy, Verity's husband, as well as their children, because they had three children together. And so she's reading about Verity and all her secrets. And then you have Verity, who's like this creepy comatose person up in the room and all this stuff is going on. And so this book definitely had Gillian Flynn vibes except unlike Gillian Flynn, like, I don't know, cause this book has unlikable people, specifically one, like to keep it spoiler free, I won't say who, but there is one very unlikable character. However, she is not written in an intriguing, interesting way that makes you want to read about someone who's so unlikable. You know, like Gillian Flynn does, like she does a better character study of these unlikable people and yet you want to read about them. Whereas this, like this person who was unlikable, I did not enjoy reading about them and it seemed too cliche and not real. Just like Colleen Hoover is the author and it seemed like she was like, okay, what's a topic that is like super, like when someone does something, again, to keep it spoiler free, like what's, you know, what's some of the most unforgivable things. And then she just had the character do that. You know, I don't know. It just didn't seem very real or even original. And it came off as sort of lazy and like trying too hard to be despicable, if that makes sense. And then it also could have gone in like so many more interesting directions with like the plot twists or just the plot in general, but like there's the twist at the end. And it could have gone in so many interesting directions. And there were different seeds planted with different things, specifically with Loen. There was something with her that I thought would come into play later. And then it just doesn't. So it was like, what was even the point of that whole side storyline? And then the twist at the end, again, Kat from Paperback Dreams, she was saying how as she was reading this book, she was like, you know, it could be worse. I'll keep reading. Like it could be worse. This isn't that bad. And then she got to the end and she was like, 
okay, it can't be worse. This is terrible. <laughs> and I agree, like reading that final chapter, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, this was the best you could come up with? Like, like I said, there were so many things throughout the book where I was like, okay, this is going to come into play some way. And then, yeah, the reveal was just like, what? Like, it wasn't even a reveal. It was just... I don't know. It was so disappointing in the end. So that's my spoiler free section as to why I didn't like it. So now let's get into spoilers. Oh, also the romance too in this, I was not feeling it at all. But anyway, to talk about spoilers. So from here on out, it's going to be spoilers. So we have the manuscript, which is Verity's autobiography. And then you have the letter that Lowen finds in the end saying that the manuscript was a lie and it was just Verity trying to hone her craft and writing from the villain's perspective. Which, by the way, the fact that she writes from the villain's perspective was mentioned like 10 different times throughout the book. The first time, it's like, okay, interesting. The second time, it's like, okay, this is clearly going to play a part later in the story. And then it's said again and again and again. It's like, we get it. She writes from the antagonist perspective. How many times do you need to tell us this? And that didn't end up even playing a part. I mean, it kind of did because it explained why she was writing the manuscript from the perspective of a psychopath. But I thought it would, I don't know, like I was thinking like Lowen had written the manuscript or Lowen was more behind it somehow and she was the villain of the story. But that's not really what happened. Anyway, the letter that says the manuscript was a lie. If the letter is true, then Verity is like the biggest idiot ever. <laughs> like, why would you write an autobiography like that and not mention it to your husband? Like, I get, I mean, they were in the meeting with her editor or whatever, and she was upset that he wasn't paying attention. It's like, well, if you knew he wasn't paying attention, then why didn't you tell him? By the way, I'm writing an autobiography about our life together, but I'm writing it from the perspective, you know, as if I were a villain, as if I were a psychopath so that I can know how to write my books. And again, she says how like, he never read anything I wrote, so why would he read this? But still, you're gonna take that risk. You're gonna write a manuscript like that and take the risk of your husband just coming across it. And then he's gonna second guess your whole time together. Which again, she was like, we've been together 15 years. How could you doubt me? Well, I don't know, you're a good writer. So if that was all a lie, you wrote it very convincingly and you should have given him a heads up. And also if the letter is true, Jeremy's actions make no sense. Why is he still taking care of Verity if he tried to kill her in a car crash and then she survived? Why is he taking care of her? Why isn't he putting her in a home right from the start? Like, is he wanting to seem like a sympathetic husband? And so he's taking care of her just so that people on the outside think he's a loving husband? Or is he like, I don't know, when nobody's around, is he actually like mistreating her and that's his way of getting revenge because he thinks she's comatose? Which again, if the letter is true, why does she pretend to be comatose when she's not? Because that was one of the reveals where she actually isn't comatose and she is like awake and around and that's part of why the book is scary is because you have this comatose woman but Lowen will like see her move or see her in the camera and be like, whoa, like sh she's not a vegetable. She can move. She does this stuff. So either way you look at it, whether the manuscript is true or not, why does Verity feel the need to pretend to be comatose when she isn't? Yeah, I guess if the letter is true, she was trying to plan her way to escape, but I feel like it wouldn't have taken that much planning to do it. I don't know. And then also, if the letter is true, when Jeremy, when she, when Lowen shows Jeremy the manuscript, he acts like it's his first time seeing it and he explodes on Verity. And so is he just putting on a show for Lowen's sake? Which I guess could very well be the case. And then he is also just kind of a weirdo and does weird things too, you know? But in general, just the whole story, as I was reading it, I, like, I read it fast. I read it quickly, but like I said, the manuscript portion, I did not enjoy reading about Verity. And again, it, which I was alluding to in the spoiler free section, stuff against children, like violence against children is like the most like unforgivable, right? And so Colleen Hoover is like, okay, well, if we have Verity go that route, where she doesn't like her children and she tries to harm them, that's gonna make people instantly dislike her, right? <laughs> And yeah, I just, I didn't enjoy reading it. It wasn't interesting. I wasn't intrigued by Verity as a person and what made her do the things she did. It just seemed too cliche, which that aspect of it, the fact that it was cliche makes me think that maybe the manuscript was false and that was just Verity trying to come up with some cliche thing for the, her alternate side who is a villain, you know? And then as Lowen is reading Verity's autobiography. She talks about how she's skipping around because she's tired of hearing about Verity talk about her and Jeremy's sex life. 
And yeah, I got tired of reading that too. Like, and it wasn't even interesting. It was just like, oh geez, come on, more of this, like skip ahead. So in general, the book was just very bland. Yeah, like there were some creepy moments, I guess, but it wasn't enough. So I would just describe it as a bland book. And then the twist was just like, like it was just thrown in there just as something to throw you off. But again, I, if I'm trying to make sense of the book, I think the manuscript is the truth and the letter she just wrote as a way to cover her tracks. But again, I don't know. Yeah, the romance between Loen, which by the way, Loen, her like author name is Laura, and my name is Laura, so that was kind of cool. But Loen and Jeremy's romance, I, I just was not feeling it. It did not excite me. I didn't find it interesting. I didn't believe that they were in love. And there was that too, where I wondered if the book was gonna go in the direction of Lowen becoming crazy like Verity was, like if Jeremy <laughs> has this effect on women where they just, and also she's reading um, Verity's autobiography and so maybe she becomes like Verity by the end, which yeah, it didn't really happen that way. But, but yeah, I just wasn't feeling their romance. I don't know if it was supposed to be romantic and if you're supposed to believe their romance, but I wasn't feeling it. So yeah, in the end. I think bland is the best way to describe this book. Having said that, it was addictive, you know? Like, I did finish it, and I read it in a day. Having said that, <laughs> it doesn't make me interested in reading any other books by Colleen Hoover, and I just, I don't understand why people like this so much. Which, by the way, there was a Goodreads reviewer, and I will quote what she, I think it's a woman, uh, she said, any negative reviews you read of this book will be about the content being triggering, which is my pet peeve of reviews. Life is triggering. If you know you're sensitive about certain topics, you have to make a con con conscious decision to either get over it or avoid it. My problem wasn't the trigger warning aspect. Like, <laughs> my problem was that it wasn't interesting. I didn't find the characters intriguing. I didn't find them believable. The reactions didn't make sense. I didn't like the romance. The thriller aspect wasn't really there for me. And then the twist, the twist at the end, which hardly even, it's not really even a twist. <laughs> it just felt lazy. So yeah, so that reviewer, that was kind of annoying. Cause it's like, no, that's not the only reason people dislike this book. People also dislike this book because they think it was just a bad story. <laughs> but anyway, obviously people do like this book has a four and a half stars on Goodreads. So if you do like this book, if it's one of your favorites, maybe comment down below why it's special to you and why you love it so much. And maybe you'll convince me otherwise, I don't know. And maybe if there's another Colleen Hoover book, you know, I've heard a number of her different, I've heard of a number of her different books, but if there's one you think I would like better, then let me know and maybe I'll give it a shot. As far as like booktube and bookstagram goes, Colleen Hoover is one I've been hearing a lot because of the booktube bookstagram world. And so I read it and I didn't like it. And this happened before with Frederick Bachman. I read A Man Called Ove and I did not like that either. So it's two for two as far as books I read because I've seen them on booktube or Instagram or whatever. And I didn't end up liking them. I keep meaning to read Anxious People. I've heard that one's good. Maybe I'll like it better, but I'm starting to feel like I can't trust booktube. <laughs> like I, I wanna read Song of Achilles cause that's another one that gets brought up so much. And then Beach Read and People We Meet on Vacation is another one that people seem to love on booktube and Instagram. So I'll give a few more a shot, but so far after Verity and A Man Called Ove, it, I haven't liked either one. <laughs> But anyway, I guess that wraps it up for this video. Follow me on Goodreads, subscribe to my YouTube channel, give this video a thumbs up if you found it interesting and if you agree, I don't know. If you disagree, comment down below and let me know why. And yeah, I did give this book two stars rather than one star because like I said, I finished it in a day and then I decided to make a whole YouTube video about it and talk about it. So I guess that's saying something, right? I also wanted to make this YouTube video, like I said, because so many people love it. And so I wanted to, <laughs> provide some balance in the world by putting out a negative review for this book amidst all the positive ones. Anyway, thank you for watching. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it or found it interesting or something, but uh, yeah, I will see you next time. Bye.